To put it briefly, this is a European summit. But before we get to the flesh and bones of what the European Council is, you need to remember that the European Council has nothing to do with the Council of Europe. It is based in Strasbourg in France and is an international organization focusing almost exclusively on human rights and democracy. So, how long have European summits been taking place? A bit of history. The first one was in 1974, when the former French president, Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, wanted to create a club where the heads of state and government could meet regularly. And ever since, these summits have been setting the pattern for the EU's political life. But only in 2009, with the Treaty of Lisbon, did the European Council become a real institution with a president, appointed for a term of two and a half years, renewable once. So what are these great political and media shows really for? Surprising as it may seem, the European Council has no legislative power. Only the European Commission can propose laws. On the other hand, the European Council defines, at the highest level, the wider political directions and priorities of the Union. However, it's becoming harder and harder to reach the famed European Compromise, especially with 28 heads of state and government at the table. The general idea today is to take decisions by consensus. Since November 2014, for a decision to be adopted, it must obtain the support of 55% of the states representing at least 65% of the Union's population of 500 million people. But some decisions can also be taken by unanimity. By extension, that means each state has a right to veto on some issues. For example, to put on record a state's serious and persistent violation of EU values issues of foreign policy or common security, or to approve amendments to the EU treaties, although that procedure has been simplified. But let's come back to European summits. In reality, a major part of the negotiations takes place well before the summit. Everything happens in the wings between diplomats, foreign ministers and European civil servants. In fact, it's even possible to obtain a rough draft of the summit conclusions before the heads of state even arrive. So, how do journalists get informed when the discussions are held behind closed doors? They don't. They have to wait until the conclusion of every EU summit, often for hours. But in truth, the debates are never totally secret. During a summit, each delegation organises press briefings. They're off the record, but information still circulates informally. And for those who can't get to summits, social media has stepped in. If you type hashtag EUCO on Twitter, you can follow the progress of discussions almost live without being in the building. Talking of buildings, the heads of state used to meet here in the Justus Lipsius building, but from now on they will also meet in the Europa building in Brussels.